Welcome to Light Up A Life. My name is Ray Ashley-Brown and I'm the Head of Spiritual Care here at the Hospice of St Francis. And I'm Lisa, an events fundraiser. We've been working together on Light Up A Life for a few months now. Christmas this year is different for all of us. COVID-19 has changed our lives. We may not all be able to be together physically this year, but we need one another more than ever. So welcome to Light Up A Life 2020. As we pause to remember those who are no longer with us, we celebrate our fantastic community and we look forward to better times ahead. Some of what you'll see was filmed before and during lockdown. We're going to introduce you to some very special people tonight. We're going to take time to reflect together and to turn on the lights on our hospice Christmas tree. We're going to light a candle, raise a glass or a mug, so you may want to find a candle pour a glass or pop the kettle on. You can pause this at any point and come back. For now, we're going to hear one of the most poignant and beautiful of Christmas songs as we listen to the VK family sing for us. working at the hospice we have some incredible staff this is one of our nurses Gita Gita what's it been like working on the inpatient unit for the past few months it's been really hard not just for me but all of us the clients the patients their loved ones relatives 
and all our staff working in there. PPE is so necessary to keep us safe, but actually it doesn't go well with our palliative care of the touch, of the hold, of the embrace, especially when breaking bad news. It feels so dehumanising, so it's been really difficult, especially with the hot weather, but we're so grateful we have the PPE to enable us to care in the way we value our patients and their loved ones, so we've done the best we can under the circumstances. I can't thank the community enough for their donations, not just financial, that's helped us to carry on with the care we've been giving in the inpatient units and of course, you know, community in that. But little tokens of just flowers and chocolates and the encouragement we've been given, we couldn't do this without them all and especially the support of CEO, K, um, senior management, doctors, Sister Sharon, our senior nurses, each other, just being there to help each other through this difficult time. It's been very, very hard and emotional, but actually wonderful. There's been this unity, this togetherness in the time of being apart. So it, it's been difficult, but absolutely a privilege and rewarding being here. My hope for the future, I can't wait to embrace and hug and touch and hold and get rid of that PPE so we can see each other, so we can communicate more effectively. And I can just hope and pray that day will come soon, just to allow us to be human again. I've worked at the Hospice of St Francis for several years and our staff who work in our inpatient unit and in the community are some of my heroes. There are plenty of unsung heroes in our community too. This year we've heard a phrase a lot, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. We're so grateful at the hospice for all of your kindness and we've heard so many lovely stories of kindness that people in our communities have shown one another. Just before the last lockdown, Lisa was able to visit a local playgroup and hear how they have been coping with COVID-19. Can you tell us a little bit about the charity? Well, Berkham Stood Under Fives has been running for over 30 years. We meet a couple of times a week when we're open and we provide support which is non-judgmental, a relaxed, warm, friendly atmosphere, a cup of tea for the parents and play and activities for the children. It's been very difficult because we've got such a wonderful parish room here. The families miss coming and we miss seeing the families, but we have managed to run the group online. We have fair share collections of food from a local supermarket who have been very supportive of us and that means that we are able to go and visit our families on the doorstep. And we've also been lucky through local donations to put together art kits, activity kits, so we've been able to deliver those to the families as well. I'm really looking forward to being able to welcome perhaps children that have been born in lockdown. They've had no contact with anybody other than their immediate family and um, I, know, I know that a lot of them would welcome coming to this local group and making new friends and helping their, their babies to socialise with other babies. Thank you to all our unsung heroes out there. What a fantastic community we're part of. As well as reflecting, we thought it was important to have some celebration. So we have recreated a well-known song, which we think you'll recognise, and asked our local community to help us to bring it to you. It's a way of looking forward to the time when we'll be able to sing and dance together. The words will be on your screen, so we hope you can join it at home. But before the song, we have a very special message for you. Hi there, my name is Don Powell and I'm the drum with Slade. I'm letting you know I'm so pleased to be supporting the St Francis Hospice in Berkhamstead. I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. So here it is, you know the rest, okay? Are you hanging up your face mask on the Washing your sore hands one hundred times It's been a tough old year With guidelines to obey Always keeping two years away So here it is, Merry Christmas Everybody's been strong Thank you. 
Thank you to everyone who took part and we do hope you were singing along at home. This hospice is your hospice. It belongs to our local community and we're going to hear from somebody now who's part of that community and this is Jane's story. What a terrible year. I remember starting it with a sense of dread, something in my subconscious, something I couldn't put my finger on. I gave up my job at the beginning of March to care for my parents because mum's cancer treatment had stopped working. Then along came Covid and lockdown and things became a lot more difficult. In the summer, Dad had a fall and was admitted into hospital where sadly he passed away and it was then that Mum's health declined rapidly. Ten days later, a room became available at St Francis and Mum and I were embraced into the hospice. Mum was loved and cared for for three weeks until, 30 days after Dad passed away, Mum had a dignified, pain-free death in a place that she loved. Since then, the hospice has become a constant, calming place for me. Ray has been helping me through some tough times with the reality of losing both my parents so close together was too hard to bear. Christmas this year is going to be difficult and different for all of us. So we need to cherish the time we have with our family and friends and remember with love those that are no longer with us. I take comfort in the Eskimo legend that says, perhaps they are not stars in the sky, but rather openings where our loved ones can shine down on us and tell us they love us. So, Mum and Dad have sailed away on their final voyage and I hope and pray that we can all sail forward into safer, calmer, happier waters where one thing is certain, love is enduring and eternal. We're very fortunate to have a hospice community made up of people like Jane, who really supports us. Another one of those people is Fiona Dolman. She plays the wife of Detective Barnaby in Midsummer Murders. Fiona has filmed this at home and will be leading us in our time of remembrance, so please do have your candle at the ready. During Fiona's contribution, look out for the beautiful dedication stars that people have been sending in, in memory of their loved ones who have died. My lovely dad was cared for by the Hospice of St Francis for five years. In fact, we spent his last Christmas there all together as a family and the love and companionship that we received brought us so much comfort. I know we can't all be together this year in person, but we can be together in spirit. I'd like to send my love to anybody out there who's missing someone that they love this Christmas. I'm very honoured to have been asked to read this beautiful poem for you. On the Death of the Beloved by John O'Donoghue. Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts where no storm or night or pain can reach you. Your love was like the dawn brightening over our lives, awakening beneath the dark a further adventure of colour. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze quickened in the joy of its being. You placed smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart and your mind always sparkled with wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake, complete. We looked towards each other no longer from the old distance of our names. Now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you with outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything to which we bring our best refinement. 
Let us not look for you only in memory, where we would grow lonely without you. You would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows and music echoes eternal tones, when orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. May you continue to inspire us, to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again in the land where there is no more separation and where all tears will be wiped from our minds and where we will never lose you again. I'd like to invite you now to join me as we light our candles. This Christmas, may the flame of love burn bright in our hearts and in our communities. And may that love light up our lives, the lives of all those that we love who are no longer with us, and the lives of those who we would love to be with, but we're unable to be close to this year. Happy Christmas. So as we hold our candles together now, Let's just reflect on those lovely words from Fiona and take time to remember once again our loved ones. A student from Tring School for the Performing Arts, Aaron James, has written a beautiful song for us. We thought that this fitted really so well with the words we use in our hashtag Your Precious Life. We talk about a hand in the darkness, a warm embrace, a yearning to belong one to another. Aaron's song is called I'll Come Over and it's an opportunity for us tonight to think about those local lockdown heroes. So as this song plays you'll see some of the nominations we've had for Your Lockdown Heroes. Looking at the photographs of who we were back then Finding old memories to be forgotten all over again I found a funny photo of me from when I was only ten So I put it in the photo album where our story never ends Yeah, I put it in the photo album where our story never ends And if you're lost or found Or need someone around Yeah, I'll come over Caught up in the tide Need someone by your side Yeah, I'll be at your shoulder Our song was on the radio I had it playing on repeat don't know if I was dreaming or I heard it in my sleep Whenever I'm not with you, I'm falling over my two feet Cause something about your presence snaps me back to reality Cause something about your presence snaps me back to reality And if you're lost or found Want someone around? Yeah, I'll come over. I'm caught up in the tide. I need someone by your side. Yeah, I'll be at your shoulder. Cause if you're lost or found, or need someone around. Yeah, I'll come over I'm caught up in the tide Need someone by your side 
I'll be at your shoulder We haven't always been able to come over to be a hand in the darkness or offer a warm embrace physically this year, but our yearning to belong one to another is as strong as ever. So let's continue to do everything we can to support one another in our communities, to let people know we're thinking of them. And let's look forward to the future when we can be physically fully with one another again. What an amazing, talented community we're part of. And thank you so, so much to everyone that's been part of Light Up A Life this year. So now it's time for us to turn on our Christmas lights. So have your cup or glass at the ready. So may this tree stand tall and strong throughout this Christmas season. And may these lights shine as a symbol of the light that our loved ones have brought into our lives, of the love of our community, of acts of kindness that warm our hearts, of hope that never dies, of the good times to come. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never overcome it. Amen. And so may you have a peaceful Christmas and a new year filled with joy, light and love. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you so much to everyone who's been part of Light Up A Life this year. Stay with us for a few moments as we have some closing words from our CEO, Kate Phipps Wiltshire. Thank you so much for joining us at Light Up A Life this year. The film from today will be available on our website throughout December, so you can share it with friends and family and people important to you. Thank you too for all of your support this year. You have helped us, especially this year, to make a huge, huge difference. It's not too late to dedicate a star. The link will appear at the bottom of the screen. And you can dedicate a star to people who mean so much to you. If you can, remember the Hospice of St. Francis on your Christmas list. You will help us to fill another year with love and with care and make really special memories like those commemorated on the memory tree behind me. But most of all, from all of us here at the Hospice of St Francis, have a very Merry Christmas and a splendid New Year. <laughs>